Hello everybody, welcome to Speed Force Media. My name is Derek and thank you for watching today's video. Today is going to be kind of a different one. I'm going to sit down and give you my two biggest reasons for kind of being disappointed with the newest season of Mandalorian. Know that these are just my thoughts and this was just my own personal experience with the show. So if you find yourself disagreeing with something that I'm saying, just know that I'm not attacking you or your opinion that this was just my own personal experience. With that being said, let's get into it. I do want to start off by warning you there will be some mild spoilers in this. I'm not going to break down every spoiler detail from each episode individually, but I am going to give you all the things that I liked and the things that I disliked, but I'm going to start out with the two biggest things. I think Mandalorian Season 3 struggled with the most and I think a lot of Star Wars fans like myself would agree with number one is pacing and I don't just necessarily mean being too slow I also mean sometimes going too fast and sometimes well hell since this show has started the episodes are just too short for for me the pacing of this season particularly was the most off Episode one, I thought thought was okay. It was a it was a nice setup episode, I guess, for people who maybe didn't watch Bo Book of Boba Fett. For me, I thought honestly, the episodes of Book of Boba Fett with the Mandalorian in them was even better than the first episode of Mandalorian. The second thing that I think this show or this season struggled with the most was the writing and. I'll stick with episode one, for example, when Din Djarin is speaking with the armorer and he's saying, I'm going to Mandalore because I want to reclaim my Mandalorian-ness and I have to redeem myself by bathing in the waters. And if you watched Book of Boba Fett, you know that everything he's saying to the armorer it are things that the armorer already knows because the armorer is the one who told Din Djarin to go and bathe in those waters in the Book of Boba Fett. So that's just an example of writing to me that, yes, I understand it was used to tell the audience, hey, this is what Din Djarin is going to do. This is why he wants to go to Mandalore and he has to do it to redeem himself. But I felt like the reasoning and the way that the characters were acting were inconsistent from each other. And I don't know if that's on the writers of the Book of Boba Fett or writers of Mandalorian, but I felt like characters in general this season were a little inconsistent or just felt a little weird. Like, I felt like Din Djarin this season at times just felt a little different or felt a little flat. And that is absolutely not on Pedro Pascal. I'm just talking about the writing. I felt like almost every other episode had some things in it that improved on the flaws of the episode that came before, but then introduced some new things that didn't work for me. There was a lot of interesting ideas and a lot of great ideas and some great concepts. Uh, overall, the things that I liked like some of these concepts, everything with Bo-Katan. I know a lot of people didn't like Bo-Katan in this season because they felt like maybe she was taking over the show or they were here for Din Djarin. But honestly, at times, I felt like she was the more interesting character and she was having to constantly save Din Djarin uh, multiple times in a single episode in his own show. And, you know, things like that, I'm not going to plague or hold against... Bo-Katan, I'm going to hold against the writers because I don't think it's necessarily that interesting of a story. Now, I'm all for the side adventures and the side quests. Some people aren't. Some people call it filler. I, I am all for filler episodes. As long as it's not like annoying and disinteresting or contradictory to the overall story or the characterization of of the characters we've been already introduced to. And I felt like some of these episodes, whether it was because of the writing or the pacing, would start out, introduce something really big, really epic, like the Mandalorians fighting this dragon snake. 
and then for literally 30 minutes you wouldn't see them or you'd see them like once and the rest of the episode would focus on these other two characters that you've seen a couple of times in the previous two seasons which was literally like two or three years ago another thing with like the writing which i think caught all of the internet a little bit off guard was we came to find out that and i believe it was from john favreau maybe it was dave filoni i could be wrong was that grogu actually spent a few years with luke skywalker and you know a perfect time for the Mandalorian in Season 3 to establish that Grogu was with Luke Skywalker at all was to show us, even in just the opening recap, where it says, hey, previously on Mandalorian Season 2, they didn't even show us Luke Skywalker. But if they did, they could have said, hey, this was where Grogu was. He was training with Luke in the woods. He had the option of going with the Mandalorian or going with the Jedi and then throwing up like a three years later number. Something simple like that. And this whole epic climactic finale to season two, which was kind of somewhat undone in the book of Boba Fett, for better or worse, and they had their reasons. I, I, don't, I don't totally condemn them for reuniting Grogu and Din Djarin, but it might have felt a little more impactful or a little less jarring if maybe they were away for even like one episode of The Mandalorian. It just would have given the finale of season two a little bit bigger consequence, a little bit more weight to those actions, and then brought their reunion, it would make their reunion even even better. And that was a great story that just kind of got thrown under, not thrown under the rug, but it kind of got wrapped up rather quickly. Another great storyline was The Darksaber, this whole idea that Bo-Katan, who has to confront one of her friends, one of her allies, and someone she respects in Din Djarin, and battle to the death, potentially, over this weapon that has been in their people's possession for year, for thousands of years, since the very first Mandalorian, other than when the Jedi took it and when Maul possessed it, of course. But one of the things that I was looking forward to in this season was seeing how bo if it was going to happen in this season at all, would confront Din Djarin for the Darksaber. Or if maybe Moff Gideon would beat him and get the Darksaber back, and then bo would beat Moff Gideon, and that's how she would get the Darksaber. Or if finally she would say, you know what, screw it, I got nothing to live for Din Djarin, I'm depressed, I'm down in the dumps, I'm taking you on for that damn Darksaber, bro. And I think any of those things would have been a little bit better than just in, to settle an argument at the end of an episode where Bo-Katan fights a different Mandalorian, in a good scene, by the way, and then to settle the dispute of whether or not bo should be leader Din Djarin's just like, hey, well, you know, she should possess the Darksaber because of a legality, a technicality. I mean, it does make sense and and whatnot, but if you go back and watch the scene where Moff Gideon tells Bo-Katan, and, or no, tell, tells Din Djarin, oh, no, 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 you can't just give the Darksaber back to Bo-Katan. It has to be won in combat to the death. And they they made it such this big deal that we I thought, you know, it was going to be a bigger deal than it was. Kind of like honestly, like the separation between Grogu and Din Djarin. Hell, even Din Djarin's redemption I thought was going to take all season long. I'm glad it didn't. But at the end of the day, I mean, he went went on Mandalore, saw Mandalore for the first time, and really we saw Mandalore for the very first time in live action. I thought that was one of the highlights of this season. But it, he just got redeemed so quickly and so easily. It was in like a 30-minute span. He, he landed, he got captured a couple times, he killed some monsters and some creatures. Bo-Katan helped him out. He walked in the waters. He got captured again by the Mythosaur. And then, which does later establish 
Bo-Katan talking to the armorer about the Mythosaur, which I thought was a great scene. It was definitely the best scene of that particular episode. But it kind of also just felt a little flat. It just didn't live up to the great expectation that they had previously set up that was, hey, Mandalore has been poisoned or the waters have dried up. You're never going to get there. It's going to be this horrific journey ahead of you. And it really seemed like it was pretty quick, pretty easy. The other storyline that they had set up was the retaking of Mandalore. And that was something I was really starting to doubt whether or not we were even going to see this season after Din Djarin left Mandalore the first time. <laughs> and I do think that the battle was pretty entertaining. You had a big battle in the sky with the troopers and the Mandalorians, and then later you had the battle with Moff Gideon and Bo-Katan and the revelation of Moff Gideon's clones, which once again was another story that was set up previously that seemed like it was such a big deal of what is Grogu's M count? Are we extracting Grogu's M count? What is all this cloning for the Empire and for Thrawn that's going on? Are they making Supreme Leader Snoke? Are they recloning the Empire or the Emperor? And then we find out that Moff Gideon doesn't care for clones at all. And then five minutes later, we find out, oh no, he does, and he's been cloning himself and trying to give himself Force powers, which would then be in a Beskar armor with technical enhancements. And then all those clones were killed, and that storyline seems, at least right now, like it's kind of been wrapped up. And there's just a few of these stories throughout this show and throughout this season that seems like it was set up to be something really, really big, really, really interesting and intriguing, and then was just wrapped up in a good way, but not as satisfying, impactful, emotional, or as entertaining as it could or should have been. It just wasn't as interesting as it should have been. And that goes with the faults of the writing. Now, some of the stuff was written really well and just kind of misplaced. And that's where the pacing issues go in. Like the two characters that I can't remember their names, I'm sorry, but the two Imperial characters that we followed for for an episode, I thought all the stuff they were talking about was interesting. I just thought that they should have went back to the Mandalorians a couple of times throughout the episode instead of all the Mandalorian stuff been at the very uh, beginning and the very end. It should have been rearranged a little bit better and I felt that in other episodes with different examples and I think the biggest two issues with this season the writing and the pacing the writing you introduced the audience to a multitude of really interesting concepts and some of them I felt were executed very well the Mandalorians coming together, the Mandalorians being united, not having a Mandalorian turn on the others. I think that's been done before, been done plenty of times before. And I like seeing the Mandalorians coming together, even when some of them are always wearing their helmets, some of them are never wearing their helmets. I love that stuff. And I like how the Armorer and Bo-Katan are kind of the two in charge of all of it. And seeing the Forge get reignited and seeing them retake a Mandalore. These were all things that we were told that we were going to get and we got. And I think that was all handled really well. The stuff like Grogu getting back with Din Djarin, but not really explained in an interesting way, just kind of handed back and then saying, hey, we're back together. And then we get told online, yeah, they were actually separated for years it didn't ever really feel that way to me. Whether it's Bo-Katan getting the Mandalorian dark saber kind of just handed to her after she beat some spider creature. In a way, it was death by combat, but it wasn't in any way I think a lot of us fans were hoping for. This writing was basic. Sometimes the characters felt cartoonish, like slipping and sliding on the floor. And some of even the sets just felt really small. Even in the finale, when they're running through the hallways and there's just a bunch of dirt on the floor, I felt like I was watching an episode of Kenobi. 
And when I said that, my wife grabbed my leg. I was like, shut up. Like, oh my God, I can't unsee it now. It just felt like, hey man, I feel like we've seen this set like seven different times. And I think that's just overall one of the problems of doing Star Wars on TV is that, yeah, sometimes it does even feel small in the big climactic moments where everything has to be in like a hallway or there's 20 or 30 troopers fighting each other instead of thousands. And maybe not everything needs to look like the prequels. Maybe not everything needs to be like Game of Thrones. But I did find myself watching even some of the best parts of this season and being like, man, I feel like this would be a lot better if it was on the big screen, if it looked more like a movie, which it does look like a movie a lot of the times. Looks better than a hell of a lot of movies out there, but it doesn't really look like a Star Wars movie all the time. I feel like if it had that big of a budget in each episode, if each episode was $200 million per episode, which is not feasibly a good idea. But if The Mandalorian was a $200 million movie, which soon it very well may could be, I think a lot of these bigger scenes would feel bigger, which would help with some of the s- smaller aesthetic issues, whether it's the soundstage or repeatedly used sets. But would it fix the writing and would it fix the pacing? I don't know. And hey, maybe you didn't have a problem with the writing or pacing, which I think that's great because I do love The Mandalorian. I, I've i liked every single season. I liked this season. I will re-watch it. But I didn't find myself re-watching every episode this year as I did the previous couple years. And usually when I'm watching a show that each episode releases once a week. I will watch that episode a couple of times, and if I love it, I might even watch it freaking three times before the new episode comes out, just so I can remember every little detail and be super well set up for the next episode. I don't think I watched any of these episodes twice, but I will at some point, and maybe I'll like it more. What do you guys think about this season? Were you disappointed by it? What were your two biggest issues with it? And overall, are you going to be checking out the next Star Wars shows, whether it's Ahsoka, whether it's the next season of Andor, whatever you think, I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. And if you've made it this far, and if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel or giving this video a like. It really does help support us. And until next time, that will do it. See you later.